and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms, in the arms of Christ my Savior. Good evening. There's an old saying. It says, I think, therefore I am. And many people say this over many generations. But what we need to think about when we hear this is where is the church at? If we apply the same reasoning to worshiping God through Jesus, how would that fit us? How does that fit the Lord's church when I say, I think, therefore I am? You know, sometimes I don't think... Therefore, I'm nothing. And unfortunately, that's what happens many times today. People don't think. They don't think about the Lord Jesus. They don't think about what's going on around them. And therefore, they're really kind of nothing. You know, when you look at a mental asylum, and you see the people in there, we have bodies, but we have no soul. It's kind of a sad state of affairs because it's basically people milling around, but they're really nothing there for them. And sometimes when you look at some of the Lord's church, that's kind of what we have. We have bodies, but we don't have any souls. When you don't think about Jesus, then where are you going to be? But what if you only think about Jesus one day a week? If you come in on Sunday... And say you only come to the morning service, not even a night service, that means you're only thinking about Jesus one day a week. How's that going to help your soul when you got six days a week out there? One hour a week is going to keep you in good standing with the Lord. One hour a week is going to be pleasing unto God, if that's all we think about Jesus. So when we stop and think about it, we need to understand that what we think about is really how we're going to be and what we're going to be doing. You know, when we relate to the physical world around us, we all say this is not our home. We're merely passing through. And we know that the world feels warm. Right now, like today, it was a beautiful day. You look outside, the sun was shining, the grass is green. Don't step in the grass, you get wet because it's full of water. But from the surface, it looks beautiful. And so it's easy to get caught up in the flow of this life in this world. And that's why we always have to be thinking about Jesus. Because we really need to understand we're passing through. We don't want to become permanent here. We don't want to tie our roots to this world. We want to tie our roots to our home in heaven. So we need to always be thinking about this. You know, we need to look past the sun's illumination of the beautiful world and the beautiful trees and all the earthly chatter that we see that we really like. We need to be thinking of the heavenly things. You know, we sing the song, Have thy own way, Lord, have thy own way. And But do we really want this? Do we really believe this is what we should do? Do you believe that Jesus should have his own way with you? Have thy own way, Lord, have thy own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me, and... Uh, fester thy will, why waiting, guided and still. We find it written in Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 18. And it says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go to the potter's house, and there I will call thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on, his, on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hands of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hands. Think about that. If we are the clay in Jesus' hands, and we let Jesus be the potter, if we listen to the words of the Lord, what a great vessel we would be fashioned into. We'd be a useful thing unto Jesus. But if we don't listen to Jesus, we'll just be clay. We'll just be clay, and 
basically most farmers will tell you clay is pretty useless. It doesn't really grow anything and it gets pretty hard. It does make good bricks, but I don't know if I want to be a brick. We find in Psalms 100, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that had made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Now, that is the people who accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Those who come to the Lord, then we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. But if we are his people, we are his sheep. That means he has control over us. That's what we need to always keep in mind. It is there for us to study and to understand. We also find in Psalms chapter 1, <clears throat> it says, Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Amen. Think about those words. Now some people will say, well, we don't have a law of the Lord today. We're in grace. Well, there are still commandments of the Lord. That's why you need to study to show thyself approved. You study so you understand what it is Jesus commands of his people. We are his servants. If you always look at the apostles, they always introduce herself as a servant of Christ. That's what we are today. We are servants of Christ. And as a servant of Christ, and Christ being the master, he is going to mold us the way he wants us. That's why we need to be thinking along those terms. Again, we sing, have thy own way, Lord, have thy own way. And again, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law doth he meditate day and night. We need to study. That's why it is so important not only to pray, but to study the Bible. To study the Bible. You know, we need to really look into things and make sure we have an understanding. So when the time comes, if something's coming at us, we'll have the understanding of how to throw it back. When the Satan's coming at you as a roaring lion, you need to know how to defend yourself. That's the whole shield that we put on our body. I think, therefore I am. The way you think is what makes you one of God's children or not one of God's children. And we see that every day. You know, it's so important that we understand that the world is trying to pull us in. The devil is trying to pull us in. Our old friends are trying to pull us in. We have to stand strong. And the Spirit is in us, the dwelling of the Holy Spirit is in us to bring to remembrance those things that we study. How do we have the knowing when something is right and wrong? Because the Holy Spirit will show us when we study it out. As a clay in a potter's hand, to fashion it at his pleasure, we need to understand that we have two people wanting to control us as a potter. We have Jesus, who wants to make us into a son of God, and we have the evil one, the devil, who wants to bake us forever and ever in hell. Think of that. We choose to have Jesus as our potter or to have the evil one, Satan, Lucifer, as our potter. <clears throat> Good is set against evil. Life against death. And the godly against the sinner. And the sinner against the godly. So we need to always look to the Most High. And we need to understand that this is always going on around us. Good against evil. We want to be on the good. We don't want to be on the evil. Christ is set against Satan. We want to be in the army of Christ, not the army of Satan. We need to always think about that. Jesus is life. You know, if people really understood that, 
yeah, they're walking around and they don't have Jesus and they think they're alive, but they're only alive on this earth. We need to try to get the message across to everybody is that when we leave this world, we are going to either be alive with Jesus or in hell with the devil. Now, I know they call that death. You'll wish you were dead and you'll wish you had no pain. But from what I read in the Bible, a place where the worm never dieth, the backbiting, the gnashing of teeth, the smoke, the, it's just nothing good there at all. And it's total misery forever. If you don't believe that, just read the story of the rich man and think about how he is begging for a, just a little drop of water on the fingertip of Lazarus. And I bet he's still begging to this day. Satan is the enemy of God. And Satan and a third of his angels, a third of God's angels, chose to disobey God. Satan did, became the lord of evil. He is a liar, the father of all liars, as Jesus calls him. There is nothing good in him at all. And when we talk about, we're, we're talking about envy and jealousy today in our Bible study, Satan is so envious of us because God forgives us through Jesus. No matter how bad we get, no matter what we do, if we accept Jesus Christ and turn our lives around, God will allow us into heaven. Satan can never go back to heaven, and neither could a third of his angels. We need to understand that and why he hates us so bad. If you would, go to Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64, with starting in verse 1. It says, O oh, that thou wouldst render the heavens, that thou wouldst come down, that the mountain might flow down at thy presence. As when the melting fire burneth, the fire catches the water to boil, and make thy name known to thy adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence. When thou doest tremble things which we look not for, thou comest down the mountain, flow down at thy presence. For since the beginning of the world, Men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waiteth for him. Thou meetest him that rejoiceth and worketh righteousness, those that remember thee in thy ways. Behold, thou art wroth, for we have sinned, and those is countenance, and we shall be saved. But we, but we are all as an unclean thing, and all our unrighteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. And there is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirs up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us, and hast consumed us because of our iniquities." But now, O Lord, thou art our father, we are the clay, and thou art potty, potter, and we all are the work of thy hand. Be not wroth very sore, O Lord, neither remember iniquities forever. Behold, see, we beseech thee, we are all thy people. Thy holy cities are a wilderness, Zion is a wilderness, Jerusalem is desolate. Our holy and our beautiful house where our fathers praise thee is burnt up with fire and all our pleasure things are laid waste. Will thou refrain thyself from these things, O Lord? Will thou hold thy peace and afflict us very sore? Mold me, make me after thy will. While I'm waiting, guided and still. We want the Lord Jesus to push out the infection of sin. Sin is an infection in our body. We desire to have the Lord cleanse us from the infection of sin. That's why we seek after the Lord. We seek the riches of God. And this is why we need Jesus. For Jesus is the riches of God. And we need Jesus in order to have that eternal life and to have that infectious sin removed from our very soul forever and ever. 
I think, therefore I am. If I think of myself as clay, and if I think of Jesus as the potter, then I will allow myself to be molded and shaped by Jesus, and this is very pleasing to God the Father. We find it written in Psalms 39. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. You know, many, many times we want to blame people for things. And we, again, cannot stand before the Lord and blame someone for us falling away. God, through Jesus, has given us a written word. He's given us the Holy Spirit. He has given us everything we need. Yes, we will fall. But he also gives us that opportunity because we have an advocate with the Father through Jesus that we can come to him and we can beg for forgiveness, beg for strength, and not be so foolish the next time. When we are around people who do not have the Lord, we need to be very careful because we are going to be around people who do not have Jesus as their Savior. And many claim they do, but we know they don't when we talk to them. And we have to be very careful around them because they could pull us away. Don't get caught up in this world. We find it written in Psalms 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy love and kindness, according to the multitudes of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. I think, therefore I am. We should always be thinking about the Lord. We should always be trying to do the best we can do to stay on that straight and narrow path. We need to make sure that we understand that we are to learn about Jesus so that we can also share this knowledge about Jesus with others. We need to learn and understand the teachings of Jesus so that we can live our life in such a way that's pleasing unto God. Jesus was sent to this earth. And he was sent to this earth to save us from our sins. But in saving us from our sins, he was sent to this earth in order to show us how to live our life that is pleasing unto God the Father. You see, when you read the Old Testament... Is it any different what they had to do than we have to do today? Now when I say that, I'm talking about the overall picture. Were not the prophets sent down to show the children of Israel how they should be living their life in order to please the Father in heaven? Was not Jesus sent down and to show us the Christian through the written word of God, using the Holy Spirit as our guide to show us how we should be living our life in order to please the Father in heaven? We need to truly understand this. We also need to understand we are to go out into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Jesus said this to us. We need to understand that the world is a lost and dying place. And unfortunately, many people think all are going to heaven, and then a lot of people think most are going to heaven, but the Bible says few will find. So we need to help these people find. And we tell them that they need to study the Bible. But when we're telling them to study the Bible, we need to sit down with them and show them in the Bible what it is. And explain to them why Jesus came to this earth. For so many people say he died for everyone. And this is not untrue, but you have to do more than just say, I believe in Jesus in order to get to heaven. In Psalms 119, it tells us, Teach me, O Lord, the ways of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies, and do not covenant. Turn away my eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in thy ways. See, that's the attitude we need to have. That's the way we should be thinking. Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, help me to do it your way, not my way. We need to say, have thy own way, Lord. Have thy own way. Search me and try me. 
Master, today, whiter than snow, Lord, push me just down, as in thy presence, humbly I bow. How many times do we bow before the Lord? To me, when I take the time to start studying the word and trying to do what's right, I am bowing to the Lord. I am bowing to his will. We need to make sure that we are doing the will of the Lord and not our will. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. You know, they know, Jesus knows your heart. And Jesus knows where you're at. And he also knows when you're really trying to do what's right and when you're trying to deceive. And these are some things we need to always be aware of. So many people try to deceive their way through this life. Do you think God doesn't know this? The creator of all? Jesus knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows our desires. He knows our fears. Our attitude needs to be, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. You see, that's how we should be opening up our morning prayer and our nightly prayer We should always be saying, Lord, if there's something in my heart that's not right, help me to get rid of it because I want everlasting life with you. Amen? Amen. Jesus is the only one that's going to help us through this wicked world. And our bodies and our mind is in this wicked world. And we need to be very careful as we're going through this wicked world because everything is trying to grab you. And if you really can get it in your mind that the soul is what goes home to the Lord, but the body stays here. So, you know, we talk about we got our friends, we got the world, we got Satan, we got our own flesh. And the Bible tells us that. Because our own flesh says, hey, you get to go up and live in paradise, but this is all I ever get. So, it wants to have fun while it's here. This is why you have to be washed in the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus can remove sins. You know, it requires a full washing, a full immersion. It requires being buried with Christ. It says that we, our righteousness is filthy rags. If I have filthy rags, what do you do? You just pour a little water on them to clean them up? No, you soak them. You dunk them. You wash them. If you're filthy dirty, are you just going to pour a little water over your head and say you're clean? No, you stand there and you get yourself soaked. You get under the water. You get yourself all cleaned up. Well, that's what the blood of Jesus does. But you have to have your whole body covered in the blood of Jesus. That's why you must be immersed to be born again. Satan says, oh, just sprinkle a little water on you. You're good. The Lord will understand. That's not the way it works. And when you have the blood of Christ, then you have the continuous cleansing of Christ's blood because when you come back, you don't have to be immersed again. You come back with your heart torn and you know that you've done wrong and you go to the Lord in prayer and the Lord will forgive you because the blood recleanses you. Can I explain that? No. But do I have to explain it? The Bible does. And I know that the Lord can do whatever the Lord wants to do. And that's all I need to know. I can't explain to you how the Lord spoke in and we have light. But you know what? He did. I can't explain to you why Jesus went to that cross and died for me. It makes no sense in my brain no matter how many times I'm running through it. But he did. And that's all I need to know. Have thy own way, Lord. Have thy own way. As in thy presence, humbly I bow. We need to always be humble before the Lord. We need to learn. We need to understand that God is the creator of all things. That Jesus is truly the creator of all things. There's nothing in this world that Jesus cannot help us through. There's nothing you can do that Jesus cannot help you through. In Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength and my light. Of whom shall I be afraid? 
We also find in Psalm 27, One thing have I desired of the Lord that <clears throat> will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Wow. Are we desiring as we go through this life to be in the house of the Lord forever and ever or in the house of Satan forever and ever? You see, there's no other place, folks. It's one or two places. We don't get a choice, a third choice. You know, on the Price is Right, it's door number one, door number two, or door number three. But in real world, it's door number one or door number two. Which one do you want? And this is what we always have to think of. Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Jesus also tells us in the gospel account as recorded by St. Matthew in chapter 7. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before a swine, and they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. <clears throat> Knock, and it shall be open unto you. For every one that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be open. E-T-H. E-T-H. Like it or not, the King James Bible, that E-T-H means continue. Continue on. Continue on. It continues on. And I think sometimes that's why some people get so lost. Because they don't understand when they read the words, not as they really are written and what they really mean. I think, I think therefore I am. If I think of pleasing God, I will please God. If I think of not pleasing God, I'm not going to please God. It's that simple. I have to seek out the Lord and the ways of the Lord. I have to study the Bible to find God and how to please God. I seek the Lord Jesus. How do I seek the Lord Jesus? By studying the Bible, by seeking the truth. Jesus is truth. Jesus is life. Pray, study. How do I seek the Lord Jesus? We have to pray. We have to study. We have to truly look at what Jesus left here for us so we know what we should be doing. Have thy own way, Lord. Have thy own way. Wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Power, all power, surely is thine. Touch me and heal me, Savior divine. We've all been wounded in our spirits. No one goes through this life without getting wounded in the spirit. And there's times I'm sure you're going to get up and you're going to say, Why do I do this? What's the point? I'm not going to make it anyway. Who's that talking? It's not Jesus. Jesus says that you can make it. Who's telling you you can't make it? It's a Satan. It's the world. It's your inner self, your flesh. You see, that's why you study and pray. Because Jesus says, I will carry you through. But yet the world says, nah, you can't do it. You can't do it. Will it in our spirit? That's why we have the Lord Jesus. You think Jesus wasn't a little wounded in his spirit when all disappeared? You know, you think you're down and out. Jesus is always with you. But think about Jesus while he was there on that cross. Do you realize for a moment no one was there, including God, when he took all the sins upon his world, when he cried out? You see, sometimes when I'm down and out, I just remember, whoa, Jesus is still there in my corner. There was a moment God wasn't in Jesus' corner, and he knew it. Now, I'm not criticizing God, don't take me this wrong, but it's a fact, and it's in the Bible. So Jesus really knows what it's like to be truly down and out. And his flesh could have said, what are you doing? Everybody left you, including your father. But he stayed true to God, and look where he's at. And that's what we need to look at. In Proverbs chapter 3, <clears throat> verse 11 says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his corrections. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. You see, if we're not being corrected by the Lord, I would shudder a little bit if I'm doing wrong. That means he's not there with me anymore. 
So don't be upset when you're being corrected, when you're being chastened. Brother Paul tells us also in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season, season we shall reap if we faint not. <laughs> What's the key? In due season, we will reap if we faint not. We have to stay true to Christ. We have to understand that the power of God is through Christ. It's through the gospel. All power is given to Jesus in both heaven and in earth. So we need to make sure that we understand, as we find in the Bible, that the power is in Christ Jesus. In Revelation 12.10, we are told, Now comes salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which ascended them before our God day and night. The power of Christ. He opened up the pits of hell. He threw the evil away. And now we have Christ forevermore in heaven. Think of yourself as the clay. Jesus is the potter. Let him, allow him to mold you and to keep you. We need to understand that in order to seek out God, one has to seek out Jesus. I think that's the other biggest lie we see in this world today. So many people act like they can have God without Jesus. As we talked about this morning, and I know this is very controversial, but unfortunately, I can say and prove to you in the Bible the Jews do not worship the true living God anymore because they reject Jesus. And if you do not have Jesus, you do not have the one true living God. I know that goes against many, many preachers and what they say, but that's not what the Bible tells me. We need to understand that. Because without Jesus, we are nothing. Nothing at all. So, when we're looking at this world, we need to understand that Jesus is truly worth seeking out because of our next life. People seek out treasures. They seek out security forever. You want security forever? Wrap yourself around Jesus. Go to Isaiah 40. <clears throat> Isaiah 40 and 28. He says, and this works for us today. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. That is what it's like to be wrapped around Christ. That is what it's like when we stay close to Jesus and we have the word of God working in us. Jesus Christ is a promise of life. He's a promise of healing. A promise of growth and development. He is a promise of life itself. Jesus is coming back. Are you ready? See, that's the question. That's the question that so many people do not ask themselves. You know, King Agrippa said, Paul, another day. Paul says, might not have another day, King Agrippa. Jesus is coming back. Don't put off if you're outside of Christ. Don't put off if something's happened and you've fallen off that straight and narrow path. Get back on it before it's too late. Jesus is coming. Are you ready? For only one life I have shall pass. Only what I have in Christ shall last. This world is not my home. I'm only passing through. The road you take today will determine where you live out eternity. Do you ever think about that? You know, we tell youths all the time, we tell kids all the time, what you're doing now could affect the rest of your life. Well, what we're doing right now as an adult, as a kid, what we're doing right now, what path we take will determine our eternity. 
Jesus says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. But straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Those to me are some of the most haunting words in the Bible. He is saying, Most people are on the wrong road, and few are on the right road. Get it right. Do it now. Tomorrow may be too late. I think, therefore I am. I not only think that God is my potter, I know God is my potter, and I am the clay. So therefore I am being molded into a son of God. Amen. So let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Tonight, if you are outside of Christ for any reason, if you've fallen away, if something's got you pulled in a way, what is holding you back? Jesus says, come back, come back. And we need to do that. Listen to Jesus. If tonight, if for any reason, you have never been baptized, you've never been born again, as Jesus said, one has to be born of the water and the spirit or they will not see heaven. What is holding you back? There are people that will be more than glad to show you in the Bible what it really takes to be saved. 